Let's take a quick look at an example of an electrodynamic loudspeaker. Uh, this is just one that we'll use for some testing here and you can see I'm breaking everything down for folks that are new just to uh, describe the makeup of the uh, loudspeaker itself which uh, some of this applies as well to the uh, permanent magnet speaker. The conditions to make the electrodynamic speaker work the field coil has to be energized by direct current and that's typically from the receiver or the amplifier DC power supply. The field coil that we looked at serves as a filter choke to reduce the AC ripple and provide clean DC to the remaining circuit. Now as we know for folks that have worked on the electrodynamic speakers uh, they can produce hum due to the uh, direct current that passes through the field coil because it's not clean or pure and this ripple actually carries itself through to the voice coil which again shows itself as hum in the loudspeaker. So let's take a look at the hum bucking coil. That was just one of the methods used to help mitigate some of the hum from the loudspeaker itself. You can see here it's nothing more than a, a coil of wire. It's uh, wound around the uh, center pole piece that's adjacent to the field coil. And it's wired in series with the voice coil. But uh, one thing notable to make it work, it's wired out of phase, anti-phase. And I'll demonstrate this in just a moment and show how to test for the proper orientation of the uh, humbucking coil out of circuit. And again, this opposes or cancels out much of the, uh, the voltages that are induced into the uh, voice coil as picked up from the uh, field coil. You're looking at the parts and pieces from my Crosley 718 uh, radio. Uh, this one, again, someone had removed the electrodynamic speaker at some point in time, but they were able to salvage the uh, field coil again used as a uh, choke. It's mounted to the inside of the cabinet. They left behind the uh, humbucking coil, which I'll remove. I'll show you that that's not necessary now that a uh, permanent magnet uh, speaker has been put in place. So we'll leverage the uh, capabilities of the field coil to be used as a choke. I'll remove this from the circuit. Of course I've got to clean up this wiring. But uh, let me show you guys uh, how to ensure that the uh, polarity is correct between the uh, voice coil and the humbucking coil on an old vintage electrodynamic speaker here using nothing more than my signal generator, audio signal generator that is, and a signal tracer. We'll pop up a diagram here in just a few minutes, but you can see uh, leveraging the uh, plug here. My uh, two inside connection points here closest together is uh, just going back to my audio signal generator. I'm going to generate a tone, a sine wave modulated at about uh, 120 hertz approximately. And then my primary leads that feed back to the output transformer here are attached back to my signal tracer. So let me show you guys how this works. And you can see as I move the uh, fill coil, which is uh, again being energized by approximately 120 um, hertz sine wave, and I place it near the uh, humbucking coil, again, which attaches itself to the output transformer in series with the uh, voice coil here, you start to induce hum. Let me place the uh, voice coil across the uh, center pole piece here, and uh, we'll see if we've got it oriented correctly. If we do, you should notice a reduction in uh, the uh, hum itself.
And I think you guys can hear the reduction in hum that it made. It's uh, not perfect. I did some measurements here and I'll show those in just a moment on the amount of suppression of hum just in this little small test setup here that I've made. Now if I reverse the uh, polarity here of the leads, you'll hear what happens. And again, this can be done simply uh, out of circuit. Again, if somebody breaks apart a humbucking coil connection from an existing electrodynamic speaker, one could always reverse the leads and just use the uh, setup itself or the connection points that uh, provide the least amount of hum, but this is a simple way to do it as well. And you can hear in that case the uh, humbucking coil and the voice coil are actually uh, in phase instead of out of phase. Thus, we're not getting any cancelization of the uh, signal itself. And uh, there it is hooked up correctly. So it's that simple. Pretty cool technology. Again, it's somewhat limited in uh, what it can help do. But you can see it does work. Now one thing to note too, you'll notice that my Crosley radio doesn't have the uh, voice coil here of course attached because the uh, permanent magnet speaker was put in. So I no longer need, in my case, the humbucking coil to be here. It's just a uh, basically another method to produce uh, hum, as you can hear. So when I reduce the uh, hum here, you can see just by not having the humbucking coil in close proximity to the field coil, we've reduced uh, the majority of the hum that's occurring. So when I finish my restoration, I'll remove the uh, humbucking coil here and wire the output uh, transformer itself uh, directly back to the uh, permanent magnet speaker. Thus improve or reduce the amount of uh, hum that I would receive itself from the uh, choke or uh, fill coil here. Something else here interesting too, uh, using uh, speaker pop, it's an application here I can use with my smartphone. You can see I have one of the old uh, telephone pickup coils and I've got it wired in a way where when I place this surface here not the suction cup against the uh, the back side here of the pickup coil. I can pick up the uh, polarity of the signal. And you can see here that the voice coil facing me is in the uh, plus direction. And of course that's what we would want to see with the uh, electrodynamic speaker itself being put back together. And if we look at the uh, field itself being produced by the uh, humbucking coil, you'll notice it's uh, negative coming back this direction. So if we look at the other side of the voice coil, that's showing up here, you'll notice it's negative as well. So you can see how the two fields cancel each other when they're placed against each other, just like uh, two magnets that are put in place with the uh, poles opposing each other. So here we have the negative side. and the negative side facing each other.
let me grab the uh, other loudspeaker here. We'll get it hooked up and uh, we'll demonstrate the effects itself on a uh, assembled electrodynamic speaker here before we wrap up. You guys can check the uh, picture in picture but again this is the uh, electrodynamic speaker that uh, has not been broken apart. Of course I did cut the leads uh, coming from the voice coil back to the uh, transformer itself just so we could reverse the leads on the humbucking coil to uh, demonstrate the uh, in phase versus out of phase and I'll do a close-up picture here you guys can see where I've snapped the uh, leads so right now the uh, loudspeaker itself is wired the way that it should be so the uh, coil between the humbucking coil and the voice coil should be anti-phase or out of phase with each other. You can hear the amount of uh, hum that we're able to pick up. So uh, let me reverse the leads here. In a demonstration here, with the uh, polarity being incorrect and in phase versus out of phase. Uh, thus, we're not getting the uh, noise uh, cancellation. So what I did see was uh, anywhere from uh, 15 dB to 18 dB of suppression, just uh, based on testing uh, two loudspeakers. Uh, well, a partial loudspeaker, you could say, with the uh, Crosley configuration that I had. But uh, that's the amount of uh, difference that I saw measuring the uh, voltages on the oscilloscope, uh, comparing the uh, capabilities of the uh, humbucking coil uh, less the uh, humbucking coil. So folks, I hope you found this helpful. I'll uh, place the uh, drawing here, the hand drawing of the uh, setup at the end of the video. Again, using the uh, signal tracer, a signal tracer, and my signal generator. So thanks again for watching. Everyone out there, uh, take care and uh, be safe during these trying times.